to Northern Uganda. In Northern Uganda, we have four great sub-regions. And among us which we have uh, West Nile sub-region, uh, which is uh, the other side of the Nile. We have a uh, Ajole sub-region, which yeah. is uh, the other side. Yeah. So we, right up here, we are in Lao sub-region, yeah. which is uh, where we, we're going to, uh, to officially unveil our offices today. Yeah. Uh, uh, which will help operationalize yeah. uh, Lango sub region's affairs yeah. for the National Union platform in regards to mobilization and championing the agenda of the National Union platform and its mission in regards to the future generation and the, what it what look as for Uganda. Yes, uh, then we also have Karamoja sub region. Mm. Karamoja sub region uh, is uh, that side of Moroto and all those stuff. So you, we have like over 33 districts, like over 35, we're getting to 35, 37 yes. something districts. Uh, so far, we've, we've made moves. We've been, uh, we, we, we set foot here sometimes back. Uh, we participated. Uh, by the way, I, served, I still serve as the deputy national youth coordinator of the national unity platform in yeah. charge of northern Uganda. Yes, um, uh, I was, uh, we, we, we participated in the youth elections. Uh, we, we, we got a number of uh, multiple supports and vote though we also accessed the ground a little more a little late yes, uh, than other uh, uh, political parties which were uh, then operating but we had some uh, uh, some really uh, promising uh, re results yes, like please. in West Nile subregion our best performing subregion was West Nile subregion in northern Uganda yes, where we tagged was our Bongi district yeah. uh, Zombo and, um, and yeah Obongi Zombo and uh, Mm, um, I think, yeah, Obongi. That was those were major, our major, major results. We got uh, the best results, the best performing districts in Northern Uganda, followed by in Kitukum district, which is in Acholi sub region, where we also got some very powerful support, yeah. uh, some powerful uh, feel, positive feedback, where we had a number of candidates going through for the village youth elective positions. Yeah. Um, then also in Lango sub region, in some of the districts like Dokolo. Um, Dokolo, uh, Oyam, and Kole. We also had some very, very promising results for the village youth election processes. You know, youth elections or special interest groups election is a process. It has stages. We start from the village, we go to the parish, then we go to the sub county, then we go to the district where there are stages of elections. You know, so we had, we had, a, we have faced some very big challenges, especially during the. the more so during the, 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 the sub-county youth elections processes, whereby you find NRM came with a lot of money and bought of candidates, bought of uh, voters, bought of people. So they bought of uh, most of the voters. So you find like somebody comes with the five times, five times each and gives to each voter. Not that he's, he's having the money, but he's giving the money to splash, you know, to buy voters. So we face that challenge. As many people turn away, you know, based on the fact that Museveni has marginalized the, the, this part of the country, the entire the country, whereby people feel, you know, money should be given to, you know, and we are trying to change that kind of view, whereby, you know, it doesn't need somebody to give you money for you to vote for the right candidate yeah, for yourself right. Right, as a, the citizen or as a candidate or, as a, or even as a voter. You must have a meaning or a reason as to why you're going to vote. You should have a purpose for voting because it's your right and stipulated in the constitution, in the constitution of the country. Right. So by you letting somebody buy you to go and vote them, you are abusing your own rights. Or somebody is even paying you to abuse yourselves. So it's, in other words, I'm trying to call upon all Ugandans and all citizens that this time around, we are heading to what is the 2021 general elections. Uh, we need to really try to focus so much on the quality and category and kind of leaders we send to represent us for the various positions, starting from the bowel keeper, LC1 until the presidency. Yeah. Meanwhile, in um, in, his, in regards to national unity platform, we are championing what we call uh, um, a generational kind of agenda. Yeah. In Northern Uganda, we have what we call the Northern Uganda agenda, whereby we look at the perspective of bridging the generational gap. Yeah. You know, in Uganda, we have leadership crisis. You know, more so, whereby you find people who who, who entered, who grabbed the power, are stuck now in power and do not want anybody to to know to come up and replace them. Yeah. So they feel like you know they are the they are the people and they are Uganda and they are everything. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it has really brought what we call leadership crisis, whereby we are not even sure of the fate of Uganda after they are gone. Because now they are not breed, breeding new 
new new genes of leadership yeah. into the community whereby you find so we are trying as national new platform we are championing that cause then also as national new platform we are asking the, we, are, we are putting forward this question and we are giving in an answer that mm. is it possible for uganda as a country since independence for the first time in its history to attain what we call a peaceful transition change in power through voting akalulu to so like namu akalulu like to ronde like to uh, uh, let me say like uh, uh, let me say somebody to lead us mm, as uh, yeah like embera something like that right. so somebody to lead us through voting because it's stipulated in constitution and you know the constitution says that the citizen has the power and rights to determine, to determine who should stand for them and who should lead them now right. the people like nrm and museven and these people who come to buy you as a voter mm. they are not only abusing you or insulting you but they are actually they're paying you to abuse your rights mm. so they're abusing your rights two times because they will pay you and they want to go and vote for them you know, Museven has been has been winning elections for the past time based on intimidation, mm. by using intimidation and also bribery. Yeah? Now he has even started now threatening. You know, they have been killing a number of our comrades, really. We pray for our comrades we have lost in the struggle from the beginning. We started the struggle as yeah, national. It's true, it's true, it's true. We really pray for their souls, that may their souls rest in eternal peace. Amen. Meanwhile, as Ugandans, we still continue championing. As a young generation, we still continue championing that, you know, it's possible for us as Ugandans to first of all reclaim back our country. Uh, and, you know, we, 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 and we hone our country. As far as now I'm concerned, our country has been tagged by certain cliques of mafia from a certain particular tribe uh, with selfish interest. Who think they can, you know, they, who thinks without, without, without them, Uganda cannot go anywhere. Who think that, uh, you know, they can, they can push the country to champion their own interests. All right, all right, they all have right. been selling, you know, like statistically, the reason why I say like that, you know, statistically when Museveni took over power in 1986, there were like over 140 for the two industries and farms those farms were established to help generate revenue to run government affairs or to right. generate revenue to run the day-to-day -day activities of the nation yeah. so now like this those one were 42 farms including the hotels you talk of sheraton talk of what to uh, safari hotel the one in para and also they have sold those uh, the, he has privatized those things either he has given this to his loyal generals or to his tribe men who are with him in the struggle, we has even sold them to the foreign investors. You go to even this uh, Mubende here. Mubende, UPDF has chunked square miles of land and have even given those land to the British companies or these, uh, these Chinese companies to plant coffee. Instead of empowering Ugandans to ensure that no, they plant the coffees and sell it to the, you know, and he still talks of boosting production. We are not in, we are not even anywhere in the production. He killed all the cooperatives which were supposed to help who, all those cooperatives which were supposed to help, who, which were acting like you said, breeding ground for future entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Because the cooperatives were like, once you finish the institution of learning, to come and grow practically. You know, theory, institution of learning, our education system is even much, much more focusing on a, on a theoretical, theoretical part. Now yes. we look at the perspective, why don't we bring a breeding chain whereby young people are bred to make them responsible citizens in the near time to come. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things that we've been trying to look at. That we are even championing as new. Look, now you talk, he talks of going to construct roads in Congo. Mm. Right now, you know what you're going to yeah. we have, You see this road here. In Gulu, in, in, in actually sub region, even in some parts of Western Uganda, including yeah. East, roads right. are too bad. But he's going to construct roads in the names of trying to, to in the name of trying to say that, you know, they, they want to do trade. Trade? Trade with the Congo? What kind of trade do you have? <laughs> Secondly, we have not even had any paper, paperwork. Uh, with the Congo, with the DRSC government to ensure that, you know, we are constructing for Europe and this is what we expect in return. We have not gotten that. Right. There is no any paperwork, they are just going to do it. And worst of all, they are using taxpayers' money to go and construct those roads. Right. You get it? Now, uh, what guarantee do we have that Congo will buy our products? Mm. You know what I think is that Museven right now have a fall, 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 uh, fall apart with these counterparts. Let me say like Kagame, they are not in good terms. Right. In Kenya, you go and find that they even they, they used to import, export this milk. This milk product because he owns the the, the dairy projects in uh, Uganda, right, right. so he used to export this milk product to Kenya. Now Uru and the team, they they, they, they show that it was overpowering their own, you know, their their, their their the market for their own product, you know, milk from Kenya Island, milk product. When I talk of milk product, I talk from yogurt, nido, lato, all those things. Those are milk products. So when you talk of milk, it's a complex perspective whereby varieties of things are processed, including even sweets. Right. So they found that you know that thing was overpowering the market for the local goods that they you know that they were producing within the country. So what they did to levy what are called tariff barriers on the milk products from Uganda. So now Museveni is feeling now Sudan is not a good place for trading. But honestly speaking, I've even traveled.
Congo then Congo have moved up to Zaire, the roads are okay. They are fairly okay actually compared to that of Uganda. Right. So now there are places which you find in northern Uganda here yeah, where you find people are even uh, women are even producing on the roadside mm. because they could have failed to access the hospital because of the poor road services. Just in Amoro here in a in a Chole sub region. You get it? So when we talk of purposes of service delivery, we are totally at zero. If you give Museveni's government zero percent and corruption ninety-nine point nine percent. You get it? Because almost every money that is brought in is corrupted and is stolen, looted, and all by selfish individuals in the NRM regime. You get it? So right. now the citizens are just there, you know? And this one makes me call upon this, uh, let me say, let me start with Ugandans. Ugandans who are abroad. I need to let you know one thing that outside Uganda, I'm talking for about Ugandans outside Uganda. Now one is very unfortunate that uh, Ugandan government or the Museveni's government, they've not put in a, a, a regulation or a constitutional bit of it that protects the rights or protects the livelihood or the safety of the Ugandans outside Uganda. You get it? Yeah. The safety of Ugandans outside Uganda is at stake because there is no any constitutional part which, you know, stands for them. So mm. that's one problem that we have. But still, I need to tell you, comrades outside there, Abana, Uganda, everybody, you need to understand that the most precious place to live in is home. Right. This is our home. This is our Canaan. Because even in the Bible, you hear the Israelites left from Egypt and went to Canaan. Do you think our ancestors point out any other place that we will go and live in after Museveni has, after us keeping quiet and watching Museveni ruin the entire nation? No. This is our home and this is our everything. And this is what we must die fighting to defend and protect for the purposes of a better tomorrow. Because we shall be questioned as by the next, the next generation what did you do? Right. You get it? So those are some of the few things that you know we need to try to begin championing and trying to polish. You know, as national platform, we are not enemy of anybody. We we, we, we we still left in people power as a platform for alliance for people who believe in change. You know, we, we, people power still in, is, still exists. That's why you see our logo for national platform yeah. and people power also right. on the side. You get it? So yes, we still continue calling upon Ugandans, calling upon citizens. Do not accept to just be bought to go and vote for somebody. You must have a reason, a purpose for voting somebody. Because that is your constitutional right. How do you exercise it? Do you abuse it? You need to understand that after voting today, in 2021, you will stay for five years until 2026. Whether it being you voted a right candidate, you voted, you voted a stupid candidate, you voted a corrupt leader, you voted a thief, you voted that, you will still stay for five years until and then you can exercise your constitutional right. You never know. They might even manipulate the constitution to make it to seven years. You know these people here. You get it? So right. we still call upon Ugandans, upon, upon young generations, upon, upon comrades from across the corner of the country, east, west, south, north, and central Uganda. Let's champion the agenda of making the possibility for the first time in history of Uganda to change power or to make transition possible through elections. Not through working on other dead bodies to get into state house like the Museveni did in 86. And he's now going against what he even fought against. Uh, what he fought for. Actually, he's doing exactly what his predecessors or what people he succeeded at, he did. So he's not any different. He has clinged into power. He is not even. It's very, very unfortunate. This face mask, I just bought it. Government came in that they were going to process face mask for. Is it? The, the request is it for 52 billion, billion yeah, sure. yes, shillings to process first mass. Did they even bring first mass to, 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 to Uganda? It's unfortunate even when you hear about other districts and they're all complaining. Yes, that and now again they've put in a, a, a budget of three, is it five point something for seven billion shillings mm. that they want to process first mass for students. Well, students are not part of Uganda. I thought they budgeted the, enough money to ensure that they process first mass for, for Uganda. Right. Which also is in the such subsection of the citizen of Uganda is also uh, also the students. Now you say you want to process another, you want another five, is it something billions, a number of billions of shillings to process, uh, to, to, uh, to manufacture more face masks for, for, stu for students. As if students were not part of the Ugandans who were budgeted for initially during the time when they were budgeting for, for, for manufacturing COVID-19, I mean uh, face masks for, for, for the citizens. So you see, they are contradicting everything as if they are not students now. They've even failed to account for the money they collected, the donations that they collected from the citizens, from the well-wishers in regards to fighting COVID-19 pandemic. Ruagana Rukuna disappeared. I've never seen him even. The Prime Minister, he was the one chairing that tax force. Where is he? He has not accounted. The last time I saw him was when he was going for self-isolation, when he was, uh, Simania, he was uh, that they had gotten COVID-19, which I don't even know. He has disappeared. He has never appeared anywhere to even make accountability for anything. Now, what kind of governance is that? You get money, you don't deliver. Is that madness? 
and we the citizens keep quiet watching you doing all whatever kind of thing that you're doing you 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 know what he's trying to do they're trying now he has come with a certain scenario he's thinking that he can use intimidation he can use <laughs> bribery he can bribe people bribe people to go to his side like they're very very confused northern Rwandans who have joined him you know in the in his thing is so i need to tell you something that uh, we we as the young people it's time for us to rise up it's time for us to champion our agenda for equal representation you know in regards to let me say representation do not need i do not mean that we are we are to go to parliament or we are to go to you know to the various elected portion but representation in a perspective whereby i say youth are, are incorporated into the what we call they're incorporated into the into the economy in the economy sector they say they brought what we call the livelihood program the youth livelihood program you know you know what was happening in the youth livelihood, youth livelihood program they could come when they come, they send a team, the team come and train a group of youth. They decide for you even what you're, the project you're supposed to have as a group of youth. They decide for you. After deciding, they come and train you. How can you train somebody how to take care of birds, this poultry, for a period of one week and you expect them to deliver or to take care of those projects? That is impossible. They should need to understand that when it comes to limits like knowledge, that's why people go to schools and take skiers. You see, like in a university, you go and take three years for you to be incorporated into that profession. Because that is a new thing that you used to not, you used to. So, I, because the, 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 the knowledge you're trying to get is going to be something that it will be for entire for entire life. Now, when we come to a perspective of you going to train young people in the villages, you have not even secured for them the market, but you're training them and giving them projects. Projects, you have not secured the market, they're not sure of the fate of that market, they're not sure of it. So now, you find you really have a very big, you know, a very big problem. You give money, but you have, no, you have begged the people to use the money. Then how can they deliver? Those are the kind of things that we are trying to fight. You need to be professional in your ways of thinking. Do not bring for us politicians to come and run for us projects which matters. Into, you know, most of those politicians do not know what they call economy. Anyway, leaving that perspective aside, I would like also to, uh, to really appreciate this particular individual. I would like to really appreciate this particular individual. Number one, Boston Club. Uh, with those of uh, Tim, Tim Johnson, Tim John. I like, uh, I've been communicating with John. I really appreciate you so much for all what you've been doing. Today, this place is like this. Today, Northern Uganda has been, has proceeded, has progressed because of the small, small efforts that you've been, you've been really doing in regards to the struggle to support wherever way, wherever way possible and all this stuff. I'm really very grateful in a special way, uh, Northern Uganda, uh, on, on behalf of the Northern region. Northern Region National Unity Platform, I am really very, very, very grateful. And you know, we pray that you know you live long and you really see the, the fruit of the struggle because you, that is also contributing by contributing to the struggle, you are in the struggle as well as in this book. And yes, call right. upon all other Ugandans who are also in position of doing similar work like our comrade has done. Please join us. Now, coming to a perspective of we have a comrade called Nua Mutwe. Nua Mutwe, Nua Mutwe, you first come. <laughs> Nua Mutwe. Yeah. Noa Mutwe. Noa Mutwe, I've known him for some time. Good. I'm really very, very much privileged, my brother. I'm so, so privileged. privileged. And I don't even, I'm even speechless. I don't know what I should tell you to make you feel I, we are really appreciating, or we really appreciate your efforts that you're doing for the people of Northern Uganda, or you are doing in Northern Uganda. We are very, very grateful, and we are really very, very much indebted by all what you've been doing. You've been doing it with conviction, and you've actually been inspiring people down here in the grassroots. You've done a lot in regards to the struggle. I'm really calling upon you, comrades, whenever tomorrow Noam Mutwe will come that, you know, he needs support, or he needs campaign materials, please come wholesomely. Come as a team, join hands and support the struggle. Noam Mutwe has been doing a lot for Northern Uganda. For the few times that he has been in Northern Uganda, he has really, he has really exhibited the highest level of mobilization strategy. And secondly, we need to, I think we need, we need to incorporate him into the Northern Uganda mobilization team as him to chair. Because right. he has done it really very well. He doesn't play necktie politics. Necktie politics, I mean office politics. He doesn't play office politics or necktie politics, but he does the groundwork politics, door to door campaign. And that one needs them is like campaign posters, campaign materials like this banners and all stuff. So he has really exhibited the highest level of service delivery. He has exhibited the highest level of leadership in as far as mobilization is concerned. And we continue praying that my brother, you continue to remain healthy, you 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 you, you be safe. All your time may God always protect you and you always continue doing whatever you're doing. 
your efforts will never go and recognize or and rewarded. You will always be rewarded in whatever way possible by the by the by, by, by the Almighty. Right. You know. Thank you so much, Nua Mutwe. I still call upon you, comrades, comrades in across across Africa and and outside Africa, even within Uganda. Whenever Nua Mutwe comes to request for support or for assistance, please stand with him. Support all whatever he comes in because it's not just only getting from you, but it's also delivering and it's also making whatever you are doing reaches the ground. He's preaching the gospel of change. Thank you so much, comrade Nua Mutwe. And also I'd like to appreciate my brother, my brother Michael Adonio. My brother Michael Adonio, I have known him for some very good time. He's a senior comrade. You look at him, he's, he's, he's thin, but <laughs> the size doesn't matter. All right, eh? it's true, it's true, brother. Do not get the book from the cover, eh? Right. <laughs> Do not get the book from the cover. Comrade Adonio has done a lot of things and uh. a, lot of, uh, a lot of work. He has made excessive effort. Sometimes he has even sacrificed his resources. He has even, he's even risked his life to ensure that, you know, today we have what we call the Lango Sub-Regional National Unity Platform offices in Lira City. We are really very much grateful, Comrade Adonio. I really thank you so much, and I really keep, I really keep praying for you, and I really say, say that you know, continue pushing forward, continue doing what you've been doing, continue. Do not give up. Even if you are threatened or you are intimidated, and also, just continue moving forward. The Almighty who made heaven and earth, and who made this possible, possible will always be with you Amen. at this right time. Amen. Thank you so much, Comrade Adonio. Uh, it's called Adonio Michael Chris. He's the chair passion for the Lao Sub-Regional team. He's the Lao Sub-Regional coordinator for the national platform. So he's holding a bit. Do not judge by the size of his body. He's thin, but what is in his brain? That bust the brain of somebody part in government, you know, who cannot reason so bad. So exactly. these are the kind of people we want young people trying right. to take up leadership position and try to exhibit right. that, you know, you parents do not send us to institution of learning, not just to go and study, but you sent us to go and learn and come and use what we've learned from institution of learning in an appropriate way to help change the life of the community. When Adonio, when Adonio Michael joined this national, national unity platform as a, as a coordinator or as a somebody chairing the activities of the, for the party in the entire sub-region of Lao, Lao sub-region has how many districts? Nine districts. Do not think that he has just joined to that. He's an expert. He's experienced and also delivering to the community. This is one perspective, mm. the aspect of delivering that he has learned from the institution of learning and wants to try to also inspire other young people to also do similar things. Because just like I always say, refer to the Bible, you know, National Unity Platform, all people power, all the gospel change that you see we are jumping right now. Mm. Even if Museveni do away with all of us, this thing will still remain. And time will come when you have to go. And it's going very soon. Mm. Museveni is at this even, by the way, in as far as leadership is concerned. We are going to kick his ass out of power. It can't be the one. Guy, the Uganda, Jacob Uganda. Even if, whether being peacefully or forcefully, he will go. Because we want him to go. And he must go. You know? So, issues of tampering, Simanyak Weka, like I said, will not work. He, he has been also using another strategy of diversion. You know, he has been trying to, to, to bring very many approaches to ensure that he confuses people. Mm -hmm. Just during the time when, after a national union platform unveiling and launching and every stuff, and following the rightful procedures with every document, you find they have come with the Chibarama Saga. Mm -hmm. Those are diversionary kind of tactics that Museveni is using. They know, why is it that they're coming right now? Eh? Why don't they go for other political party? No, a political party, I need to tell you, Ghana, a political party is a 501c4 means is an organization which cannot be sold nor bought. You get it? It's a 501c4. According to international law, we, we have it, it is what we call a 501c4. You can go and read that subsection. Even in the constitution of Uganda, you can still get it. Whereby it cannot be bought nor sold. So now when Chibalama comes that he, he Bobby holds him, is it $5 million? Is it three or five? It was five. Five million dollars. <laughs> He's dreaming. You know, you, you see that somebody is not really, you had the contradicting story that he was telling in, 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 the, court. in the court the other time. Right. And I hear we are going for the court on the 16th. Mm. Those are still wasted your time. What we are focusing on as young people is to mobilize and to ensure that we inform, we inform the voters, we are mobilizing and informing them, sensitizing them in whichever way possible so that they understand that they are going to vote, not for just the purpose of voting, but they are going to make a very big impact into the rest of this change and also making things formalized, reclaiming back the country to Ugandans themselves. Well, brother, here there are some of our members who are trying to say that uh, if possible, maybe you can try to translate and uh, maybe in the motherland language so that maybe some others also can come to understand, brother. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, 
gan moti e Uganda kan gan moti e bwa an ni akilu on yo bit you some way ko la kan dan luan strike machine ay am a bero a bero a bero ngat malo dok from red ke 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 ko ko red pa na shi ni de platform ki kuma le Uganda da kuma le Uganda ki ki sabri jon maro ma ngwen ma ti e ya chole sabri jon lango sabri jon ma wati ye ko be chawa ni ma office of bino ka unveiling ka launching ko be